Hello guys, I'm Bethany and welcome back to my channel. It is a very exciting day because it is reading wrap up time, which means I'm going to tell you all the books that I read in January and I'm doing something different in the month, no, in the year of 2023. I am going to start sharing my stats at the beginning of these videos. So if you don't want to hear that, you can skip through, but I've started tracking my readings a little bit more in my reading journal this year. Instead of looking at my phone, I'm going to look at my reading journal with all my reviews and things like that. So first I had this little stats page, which I'm very excited about. It turned out really cute. And I'm going to tell you like the books I read or how many books I read, pages read, all that stuff. Let's get into it. Also, it's like a very cold, gloomy day today. And so I'm cozy and also it's probably a little dark. So in January, I read 15 books, which is a record for me. The most I read in a month since I've like started keeping track of it was 14 in November. And this month I read 15, which is quite crazy. I don't know how that happened. Pages read, I read 5,101 pages. Of those 15 books, I read nine physical books and six ebooks. And then of those 15, I read one, like I had one reread. And then genre, I read eight romance, five fantasy, one nonfiction, and one literary fiction. So I feel like that's really good, honestly. I feel like normally I'm like all romance, but this month I read a good bit of fantasy, which I'm feeling very good about. So let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> At the beginning of the month, I'm pretty sure like the first day of the month, I don't really know. I continued the Shatter Me series. So I read Reveal Me in this little novella and just from Kenji's point of view. And I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Not much to say about it because it was a novella, but it's the book right before the final book. This is a bind up of it. So it's this is Shadow Me and Reveal Me. I read Shadow Me in 2022, but I read Reveal Me in 2021. No, excuse me, 2023. And then I read the last book in the Shatter Me series, which is Imagine Me. And this was a whirlwind. I wasn't expecting the things that happened in this book to happen. I just wasn't expecting it. I gave it four stars. I gave this um, novella three stars. I didn't really rate the novellas because they're like so short. The things that happened in this book, I was not expecting them, to be honest. And then I'm also so glad that there's a novella after this because I feel like this ends well, but the novella after this... Is obviously just gonna be better. I did read the novella this month, but I read a couple of books between that. So anyways, I read Imagine Me. Really enjoyed it. The Shatter Me series is so good. I've had a couple people read it in January since I talked about it and they're obsessed with it just like I am. So I'm so happy about that. So if you have not read the Shatter Me series, you need to. You will fly through these books. Like literally this novella and this book, I read the first day of the month, I'm pretty sure. And I couldn't stop. So basically if you're reading these, you just need to set aside time, like a whole day to just binge them because you can't stop. Um, also, the Shatter Me series is like, it is YA, but I would consider it more like minimal spice. It definitely has some spice in it. And then next I read In the Weeds by BK Borison. This is the second book in the Love Light series. It was really, really enjoyable. It's about Evelyn and Beckett. And I thought it was really cute. I gave it a four and a half star. I thought the descriptions were really great. I love them. I love the like small town vibes in the series. It's so good but I felt like it dragged on a little bit and it was a little too long. I was like, it didn't need to be that long, you know what I mean? But I really enjoyed it. I loved the romance, it was so good. And it is quite a bit of spice in the series, just to let you know. And then I also read Mixed Signals by V.K. Borison, which is the third book in the Love Light series. And I also gave it a four and a half. It also has quite a bit of spice and I loved it. It was so cute, sweet, happy. It's basically about Caleb and Layla and Layla owns a bakery, which is just so cute. I love the descriptions of that. And Caleb is just a sweetheart. Yeah, really enjoyed it. They're interconnected standalones, but I would recommend reading them in order because you get like, you know, details about the characters in each book. You know what I mean? I put Caleb is so sweet and patient and Layla is sunshine. So that's what I wrote about mixed signals. Next, I finished the Shatter Me series with Believe Me. <laughs> and I'm still pretty heartbroken about it because I did not want to finish the series. But I'm really happy that I finished the series as well because... You get to see them have a happy ending, which if you've read the Shadow Me series, they go through a lot in these books. So it was really awesome to see them have a happy ending. I gave this five stars. It's one of my favorite in the series with Ignite Me. I just thought it was so cute, so sweet. And I just loved it. It was so good. Also, there is a bit more spice in this one compared to the other ones. So just be aware of that, but they are still YA. They are still in like high school. So loved it so much. Really sad that I finished the series, to be honest. Very sad about it. And then next, I read A Risk on Forever by N.S. Perkins. And this one is quite a tearjerker or like a little bit more emotional. So basically, this book is about Adelaide and she just got like fired slash let go from her job. And so she applies to work for this woman who has ALS. So she will be like a caretaker for her. And when she goes there, her son, Matthias, the woman's son, doesn't really like her. They don't get along, but um, she gets the job, she works for her. 
and you know you probably know what happens i really enjoyed this book it was definitely emotional but i literally read it in one sitting i couldn't stop so i really really enjoyed it it tugs on your heartstrings but i just i loved it her books are just so good i love all of ns perkins books this one and where time stands still are so good i gave this one four and a half stars i do wish that we got more of them at the end of the book like i feel like it went too much back and forth and we didn't get much of them like after they fell in love so that was kind of annoying but otherwise i really enjoyed it there is a bit of spice in this book did i put that yeah some spice in that book next i finished the simple wild series by reading running wild by k tucker and i did really enjoy this book this is about mary or marie i don't know how you say her name it's m-a-r-i-e am i crazy for not knowing how to say that anyways um she is in the simple wild series if you don't know she is jonah's best friend and so this book is just about her and her love story and i really enjoyed it i thought it was good i really liked seeing mary or marie like i liked her getting a happy ending like i love that for her and also you get like little glimpses of jonah and calla in this book which i loved so much like it was so fun to see little cameos of them but i did think that i wish we got more of them together less back and forth I feel like the end was kind of like just like random not random but just like popped up out of nowhere and then ended does that make any sense i don't know also really like tyler in this book he is the love interest and you also learn a lot about the i don't know how to say it i'm gonna have to google it because i don't know how to say this word i did a rod that's what it's called which is the sled dog race in alaska so you learn a good bit about that which is quite interesting and marie or mary is a veterinarian so she like volunteers at the sled dog race and like takes care of the animals which i really loved that part of it i loved seeing all the characters in Traverse crossing from the simple wild like first three books i love them they're so sweet especially um roy is that his name yeah roy i really liked him um i'm really sad i finished the series because i really enjoyed it i felt like i was like there it was just so cozy and i just now want to go to alaska because of these books i gave it four stars i did enjoy it but there were just some things that i didn't enjoy about it and i felt like it was kind of slow like it takes a while to get to the romance part which i was like kind of annoyed by but otherwise i did really enjoy this book highly recommend it or just the series as a whole i think it's really good but not my favorite series ever but i still really enjoyed it also feel like i'm gonna like miss the characters because i finished these books which makes me really sad but anyways let's move on next i read a dream on by angie hawkman i've had this on my tbr like my physical tbr since october i bought this on my birthday or around my birthday in October and I've yet to read it or I had yet to read it until January and I'm really mad at myself because I love this book so much it was so so good so basically it's about Cass and she is in a car accident and she wakes up from a coma and she's flooded with memories of this man named Devin and her family's like girl who the heck is Devin like we don't know who that is and then you just kind of see what happens it's so different than all the other romance books that I read which I really enjoyed and I just thought it was like <laughs> really really good i finished it and gave it a 4.75 and then i was like wait i kind of want to give it a five star so i did <laughs> i loved it so much um also i didn't say there's spice in this one a, a decent like a little bit of spice anything else i wrote in a review i can't say because it will give away spoilers but highly recommend this book i feel like no one is really talking about it and if any reviews i've seen are not very good reviews so i'm telling you you should read this it is also closed door until the epilogue so there's like a couple paragraphs in the epilogue with spice but you can just skim over it really quickly i would recommend reading the epilogue because it's so good but um it is closed door besides that which i love so it's just a wholesome happy time it is based in the summertime despite the cover i feel like the cover is really giving spring but it is like the summer like well it's probably spanned over a few months or a decent amount of months but it's mostly in the summer but i loved it i loved the flower shop it was just great highly recommend next a Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I did a reading vlog on this book and I will link it below if you want to watch it. It's spoiler free with like a spoiler section. So I won't do too much deep dive into this book because I've already like done that in that video. But I did give this book three stars. It is my least lowest rated book in this video. So, or this month, which is quite crazy. Um, Honestly, I just felt like not much happened. <laughs> like up until page 300, not much happening. Not much going on at all. So basically this is about farah and she is living in the mortal realms and like outside of that is the fairy realms and she's hunting one day for her family and accidentally shoots a fae or a fairy and or oh, she shoots a wolf that is actually a fairy and she is visited by this beast that says if you want to live you have to come live in the fairy lands for 
the rest of your life. So she goes to the fairylands, fairy realm, whatever, and you know, you just see what happens. There is some romance in this, but not like a ton. You've probably heard about this book, like literally everyone and their mother has heard about this book, but I was not the biggest fan. I enjoyed it. I thought it was just like super slow. I felt like it was enjoyable, like easily digestible in the writing style, but the fae were, was kind of confusing. Like I never read a book or a fantasy with the fae or like fairies before. So I was like trying to learn, like understand it. I feel like it's like a learning curve with learning about that or reading about that. And I don't really feel connected to the characters, like super connected to them, but I do want to continue the series to see what happens. So, and I did continue the series in this month. Also, by the way, this is, has a little spice in it. I feel like in my review of it, I said it's like closed door. It's definitely not. There's spice in it. So, and each book just gets spicier from what I've heard. I read Speechless by Lindsay Lanza. I loved this book. It was so, so cute. I gave it 4.25 stars and I loved it. Honestly, I gave it 4.25, but I'm like, did I like it more than In the Weeds and Mixed Signals? I don't know. Anyways, basically it's about this girl named Lucy and she is moving to LA and she's moving in with her friend. But when she gets on the plane, her friend calls her and is like, Sorry, you can't live with me anymore. And so she's like, well, what am I gonna do? So she meets this guy on the plane, Henry, who is actually a like, he makes music. He like writes scores for movies, TV shows, or something like that. He does something like that. And he's like, I have a huge house in Malibu. You can stay there if you want, but <laughs> we have extra rooms. It's me and these guys that I write the music with or make the music with, and you can stay if you need a place to stay. There you go. So. She stays and it's like on the beach, really nice, cute house. And she's just staying there. I love this book. I thought it was so cute. Henry was so sweet and the found family was so good because the characters that live with him, like the boys that live with him are just a hoot. Like literally so funny. I loved like dynamic between Lucy and all of them. And Lucy and Henry was just super cute. This also kind of reminded me of yours truly because this character, Henry, struggles with anxiety and like not being able to speak when he like goes in public. I forgot the word for it. There's a specific word why he can't speak when he like goes in public. He like freezes up. It kind of reminded me of Jacob from yours truly. So I've never really compared a book to yours truly, but this kind of reminded me of it. Not as good, but still kind of reminded me of it. I just want more of these characters, truly. I love them so much. I'm hoping that she writes more of them. And like other books, maybe we get to see more of the other boys that are like living with them. That would be so fun. Loved it, so good. Let's move on. Okay, next I reread Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read this in 2021, or 2021, I'm pretty sure. And I loved it so much that obviously I had to reread it. I actually read it at my library, like I borrowed it from the library. And then like last year, I found this at a thrift store and bought it. And now I reread it and tabbed it. And I love this book so much. It's so good, five stars, highly, highly recommend this book. The show is about to come out, so that's why I ever wanted to reread it because I couldn't really remember what happened. But I'm so glad I reread this because like a week after I reread it, the trailer came out for Daisy Jones and the Six and one of the songs. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about that. But anyways, love this book so much. I feel like you learn so much about life and love and heartbreak and family, all those things in this book, and it's just so good. I didn't give you a premise. Let me tell you what it's about. So basically it's about this band in the 70s, they basically, it's kind of like an interview style. It's all a dialogue where this person is interviewing the band members being like, what happened? Like, how did y'all get together? Why did you break up? All that stuff. And you're just like reading the dialogue throughout the story and finding out what happened, like how they got together, why they broke up, all that stuff. And it's just so good. It's almost like a interview as if someone was like gonna watch it and see what happened about this band in the 70s. Does that make any sense? I don't know, loved it though. So good. So good. Like literally I think everyone should read it. It's so good. And it's my favorite of Taylor Jones read. Literally, I feel like none of her books can compare to today. Jaylee what? To Daisy Jones and the Six. So good. There's no spice in that, I'm pretty sure. There is like drug use and like things like that, but it's kind of what you expect when it's in the 70s. I feel like it's very that's kind of what they did in the 70s. I don't really know. But maybe trick trigger warnings, but I feel like it wasn't too bad. But also that's just like personal preference. Oh, in Speechless, the spice was super mild, so. Anyways, I'm not even following my instructions here. But next, I read A Court of Mist and Fury, and I tabbed the freaking heck out of it. But I am doing a reading vlog on this book and Akawar, so I'm not going to say any of my thoughts in this video about this book because I want to wait till that video comes out. And I have not read Akawar yet, so I can't tell you when that video is going to come out. 
but hopefully in February, definitely in February, I will read that book and get the video up. But I did read this and I'm not gonna tell you what happened, but, or what I thought, but just know this ending, what, what in the world? <laughs> I don't know what happened. So anyways, um, good bit of spice in that book. I will tell you that. Okay, we are almost done. So next I read A Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. And I love this book so much. It was so good. It's actually on sale right now where it was on sale on Kindle eBooks for like $2.99 or something. And I highly recommend reading it. It was so good. I gave it four stars. It's basically about this girl. What is her name? Literally forgetting all these characters. names. I'm gonna have to start writing them down because I'm literally don't even know. Harper. Her name is Harper. Anyways, so it's about this girl named Harper. She is in like dental school. I'm pretty sure she's like in grad school or something like that, like pretty high up in school. And she is like walking with her best friend and she accidentally runs into this guy and like breaks his like model for school, for like dental school. I think it's a model of like, of whenever they do like crowns, I don't really know, something like that. And she runs into him, she breaks his model, and she's like, oh my goodness, this takes so long to make, and it's so tedious. It takes a while, it's very specific how you have to do it. Anyways, so she ends up helping him, his name is Dan, she helps him with his model for school. And yeah, you just kind of see what happens, it is so, so good. But I do have to say, the spice is like a lot for no reason. Like, there was a lot of spice for no reason. I don't really know why. Um, and there's also a lot of innuendos, which is kind of annoying as well, so be aware of that but i loved it i love that we got the romance pretty quickly i feel like within like 100 pages you're getting into the romance which i really really love that and i loved how dan was like assertive he was like not beating around the bush he didn't wait on her to talk to him he like went up to her and was like okay let's go on a date you know he was just very assertive in like a good way because he liked her which i love that i love when a guy will take charge and ask you out and not beat around the bush like you don't want a guy that beats around the bush you want someone that is assertive in a good way, not like too assertive, but it's gonna ask you out on a date. That's not too much to ask, it's literally the bare minimum. <laughs> so anyways, I really love that. There's also anxiety representation in this, which I really enjoyed. I love the end and the friendship aspects. There was like, she has a few best friends and then he has best friend and I just loved that dynamic. I like the dental stuff, even though I did not understand any of it, but I kind of enjoyed it even though I hate the dentist. It's kind of scared of it. But otherwise, I really enjoyed that book and I would recommend it. So anyways, let's move on to the last two books. This book <laughs> is the MVP of the month, and it is Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings. You're probably just as surprised as I am that this book is my favorite of the month because if you watch my videos for a long time, in 2021, I read Magnolia Parks, which is the first book in the series, and I did not like it. I thought it was um, boring and not much happened. It was very toxic and the happy ending wasn't there, so I did not enjoy it. But I read this book because I was buddy reading it with one of my friends and I couldn't put it down. It was so good. And truly, I think I didn't like the first one because I didn't know it was toxic. Like I read it right when it came out before it became popular, before it became like talked about a lot. So I didn't know that it was toxic and I didn't know that there was not a happy ending. Like I didn't know it ended on a cliffhanger and all that stuff. I just didn't know. So I think that's why I didn't like the book. Also, I feel like I was kind of in a bad headspace during that time. So I really wanted something happy and it, you know, wasn't happy. But anyways, I decided to read Daisy Hates and I love this book so much. I gave it five stars. It is basically, from what I've heard, it is the same timeline as Magnolia Parks, but from Daisy, Christian, and Julian's perspective. But I don't remember what happened in Daisy, I mean, in Magnolia Parks. I mean, I do remember what happened, like the main points, but I don't remember much about these characters in that book. But you do get like things that happen in Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates, but you also get all kinds of other stuff. So it's kind of like a mafia <laughs> romance. If I'm being honest, that's exactly what it is. Julian is like a head honcho of a gang in London and he steals art. So Rachel Catherine has compared it to Fast and Furious, but instead of cars, it's art. But I've never watched Fast and Furious, so. But if you have, maybe that's a good comparison. Daisy is Julian's sister. And then Christian is like Daisy's friends with benefits that turns into more type situation. And so I just thought it was so interesting. It was so like entertaining to read. I don't condone literally anything in this book. like killing, obviously stealing. I don't condone any of these toxic things that are happening in this book, but I ate it up. So it's truly for like entertainment because nothing in these books like you should want in your real life, like nothing about them is healthy that you should want in your relationship. As long as you know that going into it, 
I say go read it because it's great, but also it's definitely like way less spice than other books. Like there's very little descriptive spicy scenes, but there is like innuendos and there is like obviously killing and things like that. So there's descriptive things, but there's not much spicy scenes usually whenever it gets to that, it fades to black. So if you're wanting something that doesn't have much spice, I can't say I would recommend it because it's quite a lot, but um, I did enjoy it. I did love it, <laughs> every minute of it. So I feel like you have to know what you're getting into and be in the right mood to read these books because they're quite, quite something. But I do have to say that I ordered the third and fourth book in the series and they're coming today and I will be reading them immediately. So I love Christian, he is the sweetest and I love Daisy and Julian sometimes. I like Julian sometimes, but I've heard in the third book or the second book, like the second Magnolia book, you really like Julian. So I'm excited to see what happens in those, but I just love this book so much. And I can't say that you should read it because you probably shouldn't, but if you're wanting something that's gonna entertain you, but also probably break your heart, because there are some heartbreaking moments in these books, they don't have happy endings. They all have cliffhangers. They all end in cliffhangers. So do that what you will. If you want to read them, feel free. If you do want to read them and you don't like them, I did not recommend them to you because I feel like I can't recommend a book that's this problematic. Like I know they're problematic, but I can't stop. So anyways, let's move on to something of the Lord, which is Good Boundaries and Goodbyes by Lisa Turkhurst. I pretty much read this all of January and I'm pretty sure I read like the first chapter in December and I finally finished it the other day and I love this book. I thought it was so, so good. It's about boundaries and setting boundaries with people, when you should set boundaries, how you should set boundaries. And I tabbed quite a bit of this. I usually don't tab Christian books, but I loved it so much. So one of these quotes in here is so good. It says, we are to guard and protect our calling to love God and love people. Note to self, that doesn't say love God and enable people. Okay, that, that's smack in the face. Things are better, it's not the same as things are healed. That's so good. And then why is it that a flag literally has to be on fire before I tilt my head and say it might be red? If it's red, it's red. Ma'am, this is such a good book. Like I highly recommend it. I give it five stars and that's very hard to do for a Christian book, like a Christian nonfiction. I usually don't give them five stars because it's very hard to get be that good. So, um, because I feel like I've read so many. Healthy relationships don't feel threatening. Loving relationships don't feel cruel. Secure relationships don't feel as if everything could implode if you dare to draw a boundary. I'm just gonna keep going if you wanna hear these quotes. She says, I think Jesus said goodbye the same way he lived all the days before the hurt, betrayal, rejection, and abandonment. While the relationship certainly changed, he didn't let the goodbye change him. He let people walk away without letting go of who he was. Even when people turn on Jesus, he didn't let a goodbye turn him into someone he was never meant to be. And I just loved how she like talked about Jesus in the sense of how he was in, with boundaries. So good. And she talks about how the level of responsibility someone treats you with should like go with the level of access you give them to you. So um, when their level of responsibility is a zero, their level of access to you should also be a zero. So, so good. And then at the very end, one of the quotes is, what hurts us will not be our full story, which is so, so good. So highly recommend this book. I love Lisa Turner's books. They're so good. I always learn so much from them and I highly, highly recommend this one. It's amazing. I feel like I'm not really read a book on boundaries and I learned like so much that I didn't know, especially about like the Lord and boundaries and how Jesus was on earth. So good. Like you need to read this. And I've had a couple people ask me about that. So if you are thinking about reading it, you need to. It's so good. So anyways... That is all the books that I read in January. I tried to not talk too much, but I've been talking for over 30 minutes. So, you know, it's fine, but I hope you enjoy this video. I love doing these wrap ups and I think I'm gonna do a TBR video for February. I don't usually do one of those or haven't done one of those in a couple months. So I think I'm gonna do that soon, which I'm very excited about because it's the month of love, which I love February. I love Valentine's Day. It's a great time. So I'm very excited for that. But I think that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I love you. I'm thankful for you. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.